For many centuries, the city of Rome was the capital of a vast empire of 100 million souls that extended across most of Europe and North Africa and parts of Southwest Asia as well. Rome's empire was truly magnificent for her conquests of both Greece and Egypt had brought her both fantastic wealth and culture. But by the third century AD, the great empire of Rome was in serious trouble. Its enormous size made it difficult to rule. Its emperors were often corrupt or ineffective, and the ever-increasing raids of German barbarians were beginning to take their toll. In the year 330 AD, the man pictured on this coin, Constantine, the first Christian emperor of the Romans, established a new capital for his empire at the mouth of the Bosporus in the Greek city of Byzantium. The Romans called the city Constantinople, and today we know it as Istanbul. Constantine outlawed the old Roman practice of crucifixion and decreed that Christianity was to be the new official religion of his entire empire. But even having a new religion and new capital city could not prevent the fall of the Roman Empire. For in the year 476 AD, the empire permanently split apart. All of its western half fell under the control of German barbarian kings. And the greatness of Imperial Rome soon faded from memory as Western Europe entered the Dark Ages, a 500-year period when both learning and artistic innovation declined. But the Dark Ages did not descend on the eastern half of the Roman Empire, which remained under the control of the emperors at Constantinople. And in this new Byzantine Empire, much of the greatness of ancient Rome would survive for almost another 1,000 years. The Byzantine Empire grew increasingly different from the old empire of Rome. This occurred because its language was Greek, not Latin, and its traditions were deeply rooted in the civilization of ancient Greece. But perhaps the greatest difference was that the Byzantines were Christians, not pagans as the Romans had been. In fact, the Byzantine Empire was the world's first Christian state and it sought to govern in accordance with Christian principles. But the Byzantine Empire shared much with the old Roman Empire that had given birth to it, because both its legal system and its form of government were Roman, and its rulers were the direct political descendants of the emperors of Rome. By 527 AD, slightly over half a century after the collapse of the Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire was still limited to just the eastern Mediterranean region. But over the next 38 years, things changed rapidly as a powerful emperor recaptured most of North Africa, the Balkan Peninsula, part of Spain, and all of Italy for the Byzantines. The emperor's name was Justinian. Here he is depicted in a mosaic of tiny colored stones that adorns the wall of a 1,500-year-old church that stands near here in the city of Ravenna, Italy, once the most important Byzantine center west of Constantinople. Superficially, this mosaic simply portrays Justinian in the act of donating a golden bowl to the church. But it also shows us how the emperor was viewed by the people of this era to be a living bridge between the spiritual world of the church and the secular world of the state. To the left of the emperor are government officials and Byzantine soldiers symbolizing the power of the state, while to the right are a bishop and his priests symbolizing the power of the church. Justinian stands between the representatives of church and state. He wears the traditional purple robes of the Roman emperors and a jeweled crown signifying his role as the supreme earthly ruler. Justinian is also portrayed with a halo showing that he was thought to possess enormous, almost saintly spiritual power as well.
Most Byzantines believed that their empire was the one true Christian state established by God on earth, and that the main function of their state was to promote the Christian faith around the world. In fact, to demonstrate the strength of his faith, Justinian had old pagan temples torn down and used some of their stones to build this enormous church called Santa Sofia, which is the most famous building of the Byzantine era. The official state religion of the Byzantines developed into the type of Christianity called Eastern Orthodoxy, a faith that is headed by the Patriarch of Constantinople and that broke away from the Roman Catholic Church over 900 years ago. Orthodox Christians do not recognize the authority of the Pope and have never accepted Catholic religious innovations. Instead, they have tried to preserve the ancient traditions of the original Christian Church. Over the centuries, Eastern Orthodox Christianity was spread northward by the Byzantines into Russia and Eastern Europe, where today Orthodox Church members number in excess of 150 million souls. For the first three centuries after the Roman Emperor Constantine's conversion to Christianity, there had been few real challenges to the growth of that religion. In fact, by the year 600 AD, Christianity had spread well beyond the Byzantine Empire into Ethiopia and into Northern Europe as well. But this growth did not go unchallenged because in the desert lands of Arabia, a new religion called Islam was being founded by the Prophet Muhammad. Islam means submission to God. And in the seventh century, this new form of worship was rapidly finding acceptance among the Arabian people. And since the early Muslims aimed at converting the whole world to their faith, it was inevitable that conflicts would occur with Christians who had similar goals for their own religion. Thus, by 636, only four years after Muhammad's death, Muslims had captured Byzantine Syria and the Holy Land of Palestine. And a short time later, they went on to take Egypt, North Africa, and most of Spain from the Byzantines as well. And by the year 1050, so much territory had been yielded to the Muslims that the new boundaries of the once mighty Byzantine Empire were smaller than they had ever been before. Meanwhile, the vibrant new Muslim civilization now spanned three continents. On the continent of Europe, Spain remained under Muslim control for seven centuries a fact that greatly influenced both the Spanish language and culture. And it is here in Spain that some of the best examples of Islamic art and architecture are preserved in this ancient fortress called the Calat Alhambra, the Red Castle, that overlooks the city of Granada. Inside the castle walls, we can glimpse the magical world of ancient Islam. Here we find all the signs of a very advanced civilization. For example, complex systems of pipes deliver water all the way to the top of this once barren hill to make beautiful reflecting pools and to nourish lush gardens filled with beautiful plants and fruit trees. Here too, we can find the splendid palaces of the kings who ruled this part of Muslim Spain. In these palaces, wherever one looks, Artists have made intricate designs to create an atmosphere both of richness and luxury. In some rooms, the walls and pillars have been covered with delicate patterns skillfully carved into stone or plaster, while in others, tiles have been arranged into complicated yet fascinating geometric shapes. But besides Islam's tremendous accomplishments in architecture and art, they also made significant advances in the fields of science and mathematics. And it is important to note that much of Islam's scholarly work was done during the Dark Ages, when the growth of knowledge had all but stopped in the Christian countries of Western Europe. 
As we learned earlier, the Islamic civilization was highly successful in the arts of warfare as well. For the Quran, the sacred book of Islam, teaches that sincere believers must serve as warriors to defend and spread the word of God. It was this belief that led the Muslims to conquer Palestine in the 7th century, and it was this conquest that would eventually lead to the Christian invasions of the Near East, called the Crusades. Hello again. Today's topic of discussion, if you haven't already guessed it, is the rise and spread of Islam. Did you know that there are over one billion Muslims in the world today? That's one out of every six people on the planet. Wow! The word Islam literally translated means, submission to God. Islam is a monotheistic religion that was founded by the Prophet Muhammad over 1300 years ago. We are going to find out where and how. Mohammed was born in 570 CE in Mecca, a city in Saudi Arabia, which today is the center of Islam. At that time, Mecca was a prosperous trading and religious center for tribes of Arabic-speaking people. Muhammad was orphaned at a young age and was raised by an uncle who had many children and was an impoverished trader. As Muhammad grew up, he accompanied his uncle on his travels. At this time, he developed a dislike for the traditional idol worship of the tribe's people. At the same time, he encountered and grew to respect Jews and Christians who worshipped one God. According to Islamic tradition, one night when Muhammad was 40 years old, he was meditating on Mount Hira near Mecca. He had a vision of the archangel Gabriel who commanded, Muhammad, recite, you are the messenger of God. As a result of these instructions, Muhammad revealed the beginnings of the Quran. Since he could not write, he communicated the teachings orally to all who would listen. Muhammad's revelations continued for the next 23 years, starting a religion that would change the course of history. Muhammad would often stand in the streets, reciting line after line of God's message to him. The people of Mecca worshipped idols and did not like the fact that he denounced their long-held traditions and threatened to take his life. In 622 CE, he fled to a more tolerant city to the north, now called Medina, the city of the prophet. During his ten years at Medina, Muhammad laid the foundations of Islam, a religion that today is followed by one out of every five people on earth. Several years later, in 630 CE, he led 10,000 of his followers back to Mecca, which was captured with very little resistance. Mecca became the religious center for Muslims worldwide. Two years after this, in the last year of his life, 632 CE, Muhammad led a great pilgrimage to Mecca. In his final speech to the Muslim community, he urged kindness and respect toward others, especially women. There's a saying of the Prophet where uh, someone came to him and said, I want to give charity, but I don't have any money. And the Prophet said, you know, then do something for them.